In May of 1992, an astounding Qigong practice caused a sensation in Beijing, the capital city of China. With its profound principles and miraculous effects, it took this ancient city by storm. The news traveled fast as word spread from person to person. Very quickly, the practice found its way to over 50 countries and regions around the world and has been warmly welcomed by those governments. In a few short years, it has attracted 100 million followers. This is Falun Dafa, introduced by Mr. Li Hongzhu. Since the beginning of civilization, mankind has always been drawn to explore the meaning of human life. Our ancestors believed that the human body is part of the integrated entity of the immense universe, and through cultivating the mind and body, harmony between human beings and the universe can be achieved. People called the methods of cultivation the Tao, the Way, or the Fa, the Law. They longed for the opportunity to listen to great enlightened beings teach the Tao and lecture on the Fa in person. Throughout history, cultivation practice has been enshrined in the veil of religion. People kept their faith in orthodox religions, stayed away from evil, and believed in goodness, cultivated their selves, nurtured their characters, and believed that this would lead them to return to the wonderful worlds from whence they came. For this reason, they lived free, fulfilling lives and were full of hope for the future. In order to pursue cultivation, some gave up their comfortable life and went into the mountains to cultivate the Tao in solitude. The exploration into human life and the universe from the perspective of spirituality is often regarded as something beyond reach or even something superstitious. Are there still cultivation practices that transcend the ordinary and depart from worldly mediocrity to elevate the spirit and uplift both the mind and the body? One day in 1992, Mr. Li Hongzhu and a few of his students attended the International Health Expo in Beijing and introduced the public to a cultivation practice that he established, Falun Dafa, also called Falun Gong. With his profound teachings and supernatural abilities, he won the hearts of those at the expo. At the conference, Falun Dafa was awarded the highest recognition and Mr. Li Hongzhu was given the title of the most popular Qigong master. In the two years following the expo, at the invitation of local Qigong associations around China, Mr. Li Hongzhu taught Falun Dafa and visited almost all major cities in China. Close to 20,000 people attended the seminars taught personally by Mr. Li Hongzhu the number of students reached up to four or five thousand in each of the seminars offered by Mr. Li in the later period of his teaching. This was unprecedented. In his teachings, Mr. Li Hongzhu unveiled a secret unknown by most people, that Qigong practice is cultivation, and cultivation originated from prehistoric civilization. Prehistoric civilization is also called prehistoric culture, which is being studied nowadays to a great extent. In June 1968, American scientist William Meister found a trilobite fossil with a human footprint on it. The footprint was left by someone who wore shoes. The trilobite is a creature that existed between 600 million and 260 million years ago. Meister's discovery proves that human beings existed at that time 
and that, moreover, they had achieved a certain degree of civilization. In the same year, American scientist Dr. J. Mason Valentine discovered a huge undersea edifice near the islands of the Bahamas. After some tests, it was determined that this architectural structure had a history of 10,000 years. There have been many similar discoveries. Scientists publicly acknowledge that those discoveries are relics of prehistoric civilizations existing long before this present human civilization. It is known that in every civilization there were saints or enlightened beings who taught people methods of cultivation. At the beginning of this human civilization, there were Lao Tzu in China, Sakyamuni in India, and Jesus in the West. Even though they were oceans and continents apart, the teachings they imparted were very similar. Similar to any orthodox practice, Falun Gong has also been passed down from a very remote age. Mr. Li Hongzhu modified it to accommodate modern times and has made it public for the purpose of helping people elevate themselves to high levels. In his lectures, Mr. Li pointed out that there are two fundamental reasons as to why people's cultivation energy doesn't grow as they practice Qigong. One is that they don't know the principles at high levels, so they don't know how to practice cultivation. The second is that they haven't paid attention to cultivating their Jing Jing, mind nature, or moral quality. Mr. Li said, There exists a fundamental characteristic in this universe. It can be summarized in three words, and they are Zhen Shan Ren, truthfulness, compassion, tolerance. Mr. Li also expounded on the correlation between Qigong practice and sports, and Qigong and religion, and he explained the fundamental cause of illness, the relationship between Chinese and Western medical practices, and the differences between alternative Qigong healing and traditional hospital treatment. In 1995, Mr. Li compiled the contents of these lectures into a book called Zhuan Falun to provide systematic guidelines for people to cultivate themselves in their quest to achieve higher levels of enlightenment. Those in search of a genuine cultivation system have literally climbed the highest mountains